Clark, I want to show some new merch. I love that. What's it say? Can you read that? It says trans gender. Yeah, that's what it says. Oh, okay. yeah. And it's a page. Yeah. So we'll, we'll, we'll make sure to get you down. The merch is over available on the Michael Hearn lifestyle. But transgender, uh, I identify as a, uh, uh, a natty. Okay. But I'm on loads of trend. Loads. All the rumors are fake about trend. It doesn't do anything to you besides make you strong and a beast and everything else. No side effects. It helps you start yeah. movies. It helps you wake up. Yeah. Them. It helps you do all sorts of things that people can't. Yeah, it makes you, you know, a, a 60 year old man outlive 20 year olds. It's kind of wild. Yeah, man. With that being said, I love trolling the trolls. We'll continue to do so. But I want to jump on here today and say that um, I had my talk with uh, Transcend, talking about another trans. Um, and they went over my blood markers and blood work and stuff like that. And it's, it's surprising. And I know one of the things that, you know, I want to continue to work on and make sure that uh, healthy is making sure that that thyroid is healthy, making sure that cholesterol is in a good range. Um, the liver and kidneys are like sharp as a, a tact uh, as we continue to age. And I know that you've done the same thing. Um, and I noticed, and, and I want to talk about this. Your testosterone level has always been around above eight. So was, is that correct? Eight, nine? Yeah, close seven, to eight in there. Okay. So it's extremely healthy and at the higher range of at any age, um, even though you're, you're, you're close to that, uh, that big number on the other side, uh, as we both are. Uh, we're on the other side of that uh, 50. Um, so with that being said, what do you think triggered it to drop on this last test? That's a good question. And if I were to give a knee jerk response, I would say stress is what does it. And I think that's probably the biggest culprit for most men is stress. Because I don't think that we're all in a situation where we're exposed to so much outside endocrine disruptors, if you will. I think it's just, it's stress, man. And some of us handle it better than others, but I, I think I handle it good externally, but internally it was affecting me. And that's what the effect was lowered. You, you also, if I'm correct, you went back to, cause you're a very active guy and your workouts are very um, athletic based would be a good term. You lift weights, but it, it's more in a motion of movement, uh, range of motion, and, and speed between sets and so on, um, which I love for you. Uh, and then I think you also went back to that old school kind of mentality of that, that foundation work that you and I did in our teens and 20s um, that allowed us to get on stage, compete, and win, that just slowing it down a bit, doing your squats, doing your heavy bent over rows and, and, and bench press and stuff. Do you not think that that might have triggered a droppage as well? That's a good point. And that is added stress to the body, right? Because I wasn't used to that. I got away from doing squats. I got away from the old school bodybuilding type of workouts. And the reason was I was at a gym where it just wasn't motivating me to do that. So I switched gyms and I went to another place and I got around some guys that the first day I was in there, they started to challenge me. Well, the 70 year old guys weren't challenging me and all of the regular people will call it regular gym goers. It just yeah. wasn't an atmosphere. And we had talked about that the last time the atmosphere just gets you going. So I went in there and just started lifting heavy. Matter of fact, today we had a great back workout and these guys are 20 years younger than me. And, you know, I'm, I'm pushing it. I'm, I'm pushing it hard now. So yeah, that could be it. You would think it's the opposite, but it could not be the opposite. Well, from everything I've ever researched, it's not the opposite. It, it, it doesn't raise it. It, it. it it raises it, but not on um, a blood level in the sense of reporting it. Um, because what it does is, is actually factors the, the drop of it, even though it is raising in the sense of what's really going on. Um, so I, I love that research on that that you're tested and it will be much higher but it's uh 
uh, in real life where it's not on the test, if that makes sense to you guys. So stress, even training with heavy weights um, will raise your testosterone, but on your reports, most of the time, uh, from everything that I've ever studied, and, and I'm one actually to really clarify that it's it doesn't show there, it lowers it. Um, with that being said, what's the what's the game plan that you're starting to do? Because I think you did like more boron and taking some extra vitamins to try to raise it up, and especially your free test. Okay, explain this. What do you got there? So what I did was I got my blood tested, and that's when I found out it went down. So with that, we looked at my blood, and we did a customized supplement regimen for me specifically. So I've got a morning and an evening pack and a lunchtime pack right here. And for the first time in my life, I'm being religious about taking this because like you, I want to test it and see what this supplementation will do for me regarding that number that I got on my blood work. Right. So I'm taking all of the stuff that has been shown and researched that will boost testosterone, like you had mentioned boron and the Tonkat Ali and the horny goat weed and things like that, that some might not agree that does it. But look, I'm taking this approach because I want to take this approach. And then the vitamin D and the essential fatty acids and all of that stuff. You had talked about an animal pack before. So basically what I have is a customized animal pack based upon my blood work and the research that was done on me in my blood. The only thing they can tell you. So this is a much more thoughtful approach than me just going off to some GNC somewhere and buying whatever some guy tells me to buy. No, I'm, I'm taking what has been prescribed to me based upon my blood work. So that's the approach that I'm taking. Plus, I'm still training hard. I'm doing a fast right now, seeing what that does to me. So I'm, I'm just messing around with different things, man. And I'll get my blood tested again. And then we'll it's see. Fun. You know, with the cholesterol and all of those other markers are important, too. I'm not just interested in testosterone. It sounds like you are. It seems like you're really fixated on it, man. I'm just well, saying. I'm just I didn't saying. wake up with a boner this morning. I, <laughs> I love the fact that you're, you're uh, it's, it's so cool that you're having fun with this. Oh, it's a blast. I'm having so much, like, I think now more than ever, I've had a lot of fun doing that. And it's because... Part of the reason is because people are recognizing the fact that my, my age and the way I look is uncommon, right? It's not normal. So that pride of ownership is driving me to see how much more, like you always talk about the skin, like, can I make my skin look better? Can I make everything look better and function better and just show up as a 60-year-old man looking like, the one half of 1% of the population, man. You know, zero, like zero, zero. Zero, zero, yeah, it, it's, uh, I think that's the coolest thing about where we are. And it's so cool in this world of health and fitness and the most pinnacle athletes in the world. It's great that, that, that that's, I mean, it's such a small amount that are at the peak of the mountain still today from the eighties and nineties. Um, and you're one of them and that, I've been on this journey with you and, and we're so tight. So it's fun to have you here still because you fully understand this journey to the fullest. And so when I can communicate with you, and this is a little bit of a frustration I find is when, uh, when you're, when you've done something to this level for this long, there's so few that you can really talk to. And so I appreciate you being who you are and, and finding this next gear that you found gear get it gear um but it, it's cool that you found this next gear to go hey i need to level it up a bit and then you know for me i'm leveling up because i got a little one and so i have to figure out and, and like you were saying it's like people are coming to you going wow you look this good and so you're like oh yeah let me show you even a little bit more what i can do and for me i'm like man the skin the, the connective tissue, if we can stay that and stay strong, then I can grapple with him in 10 years. And to do that, we have to test the blood. And we also have to figure out how we can train for the next 10 years as we age. And how can we stay ahead of the uh, father time? How do we stay ahead of it? And the problem is 
that we have so few that are in front of us in that stage. I, I'm lucky I got Robbie Robinson. Um, but there's so few that we can look at. But you and I have both known, and you were very close with Jack Lane, somebody that actually did that until his 90s. So it's kind of cool that we get to create a whole new future for us as we do this and learn even further. Is there anything else about the blood work that you're working on? That, you know, the back to the testosterone thing, total testosterone is one thing, but free testosterone is another. So that's what we really looked at is we don't want to just raise up the, the total. We want to raise up the free as well. So that's why we added things in like boron to my custom it's, custom supplement nice. package. Uh, so other than that, no, I'm going to get it tested again. And probably I did it last month. So probably two more months. We'll do it every quarter. And it's a project that I'm actually working on. We're going to launch this so people can do it. They can get their custom supplements and have something less invasive than going right to TRT or something like that, which I'm not saying that I'll never do. I won't do it till I need to do it. And I did a podcast the other day. I said, when I do it, I'm going to cash in on it. Someone's going to pay me money to endorse their product. So I don't want anyone to think that I'm against it. I'm just against guys doing it when they're not ready for it because they haven't tried any lifestyle modification yet. Right. They haven't even done their blood work yet. Like we're really both advocates Get your blood work done. That's the overall arching theme of what we're talking about. So if you're watching and you haven't, my question would be why? What are you afraid of? You know, I, I yeah, it that, find something out. That's an odd one for me. And I, and I said this the other day. I said I, I posted a video going, man, it wasn't an option for me uh, when I was a kid. You know, I'm, I'm sitting there, you know, moving down to California, working with Joe Weider, winning the universe, winning the California powerlifting. I couldn't get my blood checked or couldn't do peptides even, you know, I didn't know about that. And so now they got those options. I, I would run out there if I was all these guys on here that are 30, 40, 50, and I got 20 year olds that are going over there. 26 is testosterone was at 200, 26, 26 and his testosterone is 200. How stressed out is that kid? Yeah. You know? It's a pandemic. That's, that's the real pandemic that's going on. In, in the world is low T in men, unfortunately. But you don't and know they're, they're tested, right? You can't just go family out. doctor. And and they're family and doctor doctors. looking at it. That yeah. was one of the things. You got somebody special to look at it. Who's looking at your blood markers and explaining this to you? You know who Doug Grant is? I can't say I do. Doug Grant was in the movie Invictus and all of these other things. He's also verified that I'm natural and not on anything. And he was waiting. He was waiting to test me because he's known about me and he had several people ask him, hey, do you think this Clark Bartram guy is natural? He's like, I don't know, but I'm about to test his blood because he and I are involved in a project together. And this is me testing this out prior to launching this thing. Right. But he is someone who understands exactly what it is that he's looking at because the IOC and uh, WADA and, and USADA and these companies that test for specific drugs, call him. He's an expert in the field. So he's someone who knows what to look for when they're trying to find out whether or not someone's natty or not. And he also knows what to look for to see what's lacking because he is wanting people to stay drug-free and, and not do TRT for as long as possible. Yeah, what would be the point of, so I know there's other options besides straight to T for bumping your testosterone. Uh, I think that's great that you're working with somebody that's just uh, credible um, and that knowledgeable, mostly knowledgeable, because I think if you're working with somebody like that, that you've explained to me, and I trust your opinion of people, uh, it's, it's tenfold better than the family doctor that looks at numbers so elementary and go, oh, you're 300. It's 250 to 900. You're good. You're fine. Move on. Where that individual. Yeah. I mean. There is individuals, obviously, with low T that could be freaking great and everything's fine, but there's others that have lack of energy and so on. So um, make sure to get out there. Make sure that you get your blood work done. Make sure that you're moving forward in the right way. But like Clark said, and I agree, regardless of what you're going to do, unless you are eating right, uh, 
uh, training consistently correct and consistent, you're not going to make much changes. You know, you can get on whatever you want to get on. We've seen this enough that it doesn't, it doesn't change your body unless you're changing it with the other stuff. Yeah. It, you know, getting on something ain't going to get you up at five in the morning to go train. Getting on something ain't going to get you to, to do a, a fast for the day. If that's what your protocol requires, uh, getting on something, let me give you an example. I I'm, I'm fasting from sun up to sundown for 30 You're doing minutes. Ramadan. Is, is that correct? Yes. So I'm on day 20 right now, day 21. And I went to a brunch the other day. And I love this kind of stuff. Everybody's asking me, aren't you going to be hungry? And I'm thinking, no, this is not how I go into the situation. I go in loving the fact that I'm the only one that's not eating. So I go in there and all these are like cafeteria tables all lined up. So I sit down and I just sat there and everybody's going around getting these big giant plates. And this lady across from me who I don't know, she's like, why aren't you eating? I said, I'm just not. I didn't say anything. She's like, oh, OK. And then so she's eating. And then I see her start making excuses. Oh, well, my, my eyes are bigger than my plate. And I'm thinking to myself, then why don't you stop? What I recognize is people eat so damn much that they don't need to. Then she says, are you fasting? I said, yeah. And it just gave me more and more strength. I love being comfortable, comfortable in an uncomfortable situation. And that's what I was trying to do. You know, I, I didn't think twice about it. I didn't care. I didn't want it. You know what I mean? I was disciplining myself to be that guy that was could sit there and go, those shrimps don't matter. Those cakes don't matter. That fucking steak, whoops, excuse me, that steak don't matter. Uh, none of it, man. I, I, I mean, you're talking to me, so you know that I live that lifestyle. Yeah. I, love, I, I, I don't think of it the odd man out. I just think of it as that, that's how I'm programmed. Um, and it's so fun being that, like you're saying, be in that situation and just go, no, I'm good. Um, now, with that being said, on Sunday, Mona and I ate like savages. I saw savages. That. I saw that. We had Mona's French toast and everything. And I think I had like four orders of bacon. So um, I took care of it that day. Uh, that was just your high day. Yeah, it was my, my cheap moment, right? Um, we finished up the project Blue Ridge that we just finished filming. Um, not done. I, I, I got to go back out to North Carolina to uh, film again on Blue Ridge. For you guys that don't know, we were just filming with Jonathan Sheck and Max Martini on Blue Ridge. It's a great project. It's about a, a nice country boy sheriff who's played by Jonathan Sheck um, that does not lose fights. It's like a it's it's a great great uh, wholesome, also a very message heavy um, uh, TV series that will be out later this year. Um, it, it, Jonathan Sheck is is just an old school guy that I've been friends with since 1990. And a, a, a seriously deep actor um, from the thing you do with John, uh, Tom Hanks to playing Houdini um, to so much more. Um, but it's just uh, it's been a great year of me being across from these really great, great actors and being able to spar with them on screen in a sense. And uh, it brings my acting. I, I, I can keep doing all the classes that I've been doing, but. Being on set and, and, and spitting with somebody like that and working with them is truly amazing. So uh, thank you guys for the support there. Um, You're living your dream, brother. You're living your dream, man. Now more than ever, right? Isn't it cool how later in life, man, it's it's coming around now. You're getting all this stuff lining up. That's cool. I was so that was something I really got brought to my attention is that I'm being able to do these movies and TV shows now. But it's not because of the fact that I've taken classes for the last 30 years and studied. And, you know, they don't know about that side. They only know about the health and fitness side. They don't know about the struggle of trying to break into that field of acting. They don't know about me going in and getting down to the final for Superman or going in and for Scorpion King. And the, uh, <laughs> the that final stage with Scorpion King, the second Scorpion King, not with The Rock, the following. Um, where the person was adamant that I was not going to be it. As soon as I walked in the room, it was, oh, you're a bodybuilder? Well, how can you do this? You're self-centered, narcissistic. You spend all day in the gym. Shut down. 
But the cool thing is I'm still here today pushing it. And now Magazine Dreams may be up for an Oscar against um, – and Jonathan may receive an Oscar for his performance, and I'm co-starring. But my point is I'm not here because of those 30 years of continuous work and being said, you suck, move on. I'm here because I stayed true to health and fitness so I could play a 38-year-old in Magazine Dreams. It's not that I'm playing a guy my age. It's not that I'm playing a retired, I'm playing the champ. So it's kind of cool that, you know, as for you, this absolute stud I'm looking at here, you're not that typical society guy, not even close. You're not even a typical 40 year old guy. So the, I guess the health and fitness that we do for so, so long, pays incredible dividends later in life, more than people understand. And people are so focused on, oh, yeah, I want muscle. I want to be ripped. And it's like, ugh, the skin, healthiness, uh, youthfulness, um, activity-wise, the level that you can move and groove to, it's like they bypass a lot of that. Help me understand why that is and why is it just the – I want to be strong and I want to be uh, uh, muscular or ripped right now. It's if you can. It's the culture we live in. It's our Western culture. We want everything now. And we've glorified a ripped body so much that that's what people think is a representation of what's healthy. But when we know completely different, we know a lot of ripped people who aren't healthy, aren't athletic, don't function on this planet really well. And we have to look at our existence holistically, not just myopically with this idea that I want to look a certain way because that will yield everything I've ever wanted in my life when we know that's not true. You can get ripped and still not be any of what makes you a highly functioning human. You know, a lot of those trick shots and stuff that I go off and do, I'm out there with the intention of maintaining hand-eye coordination, balance, proprioception, all of these different things. I don't even know what that word means. <laughs> just just understanding your body in space and how to move like through different situations. And it, it's fun to me too. It's meditative to be out there by myself. I'm in the sun. I'm getting this good thing. So I'm factoring all of that into what I'm doing when I'm out there. I'm very purposefully doing all of these things to maintain a youthful existence. And, and people don't do that. They just have this one thing, like I'm going to join a gym, I'm going to get a trainer, I'm going to get ripped. That's cool to a degree, but there's so much more than that. And I think when you unlock the other parts, the getting ripped part becomes a whole lot easier because you're not so focused on it, not so stressed out about it. Yeah, I think that's a great point. I think it really... Uh seems to relax the people I work with, at least. And when, when they go, I, I want to be here. And I'm like, okay, stop. Because let me just give you an example. I just uh, I just got back in town. So I'm talking to all my one-on-ones. And I got this savage of a woman. Savage. She's, she's competed in three powerlifting meets in the last two months. And then after that, she wants to get on stage to compete in, in uh, figure. And she's done this before. And she's She's in her uh, uh, 40s now, and, and she's an absolute savage. And she has in her mind, and this is why I say you're always your worst coach. You know, she has this number in her mind, and that number can't change because then she'll feel feels bloated, doesn't look as good to her mentally. Um, it's just you lose it. So she wants to train for powerlifting and set these world records while being on somewhat of a deficit – so she doesn't blow up and doesn't build too much muscle so she can stay in a weight class. And then afterwards, she'll get ready for her show. And I go, listen, you're trying to do 10 things at once. And so I'm okay with that. I'm somewhat the same way. But at some point, you got to understand, if we can't raise your body weight, we're trying to set PRs. And then after this, your goal is, is physique in that sense, building the body. You have to understand that you're going to feel like shit 24 seven because you're power lifting and you're closing in on this meat. You're not going to eat enough to recover. 
and you're not saying, hey, let me set a PR this year, and then next year set a PR. You're going, each meet you want to set a PR, and your meets are four weeks apart. I'm like, you're asking a lot. You're asking a lot. So I would like you at some point to go, let me tone it down a bit. Let the body kind of move up a little bit so you can build. Um, and that way we heal as we move forward instead of always beating the body down to just an extreme. Um, but that's just my take on just somebody I talked to today that, you know, as bad as we want it in, like you said, the culture, I need to be ripped today. I need to have this today. And then I'm going to maintain it, which there's no such thing as maintaining, but it's like, you got to give yourself some kind of room to breathe. You got to be able to breathe. And I know that you've seen me go through my phase where, Hey, I'm focused on strength. This is what I'm going to do. Okay. Now I'm going to slice up and you've seen me get ridiculously sliced, but I don't stay there. And we just had a conversation with Frank saying, did we not? Yep. And do you remember that conversation about the peak of the mountain? Yeah. You just posted it the other day, right? Can you refresh the viewers here if they did not see it? I, I couldn't do it justice. Like I'll do it. it. I think you'd be better at it, but he, he I was so excited. It. Huh? I, I, I was just so excited when he said it because it's it's just nice to hear somebody that we look at as a an actual professor to us. Yeah. And in, in, in this business. There's not a guy on, on social media right now that has 10 million followers that talks about it that I would respect more than Frank talking about nutrition and training. Um, his years of education outweighs everyone. And so him saying that you never stay at the peak of the mountain, you come back down to base camp, you recover, you feed, you get more uh, in your package to carry up and then go back and climb the mountain again. And that was his gist. Uh, that's me just putting it on a, a short note. But that's something that you and I do. And, and you right now are, are so hyped up at the base camp going, let me go. Let me climb that mountain again. I'm ready to go. I'm testing the blood. I'm, I got my vitamins, my breakfast, my lunch, my dinner vitamins. And you get to test this again. And you're doing every three months. Right. Right. right? I'm doing every six weeks. And, and like you which is, this is so fun. I'm going to document the next five years um, because of the fact that I would like Titan to have something to go, here you go, um, and let him tell the story relative to me. I got a guy I want you to get on your podcast. His name's Mike Chan. I had him on my podcast the other day and my Zoom call. He's in the Philippines, and this guy has so much knowledge. He runs a few longevity centers there in the Philippines. But this guy's knowledge base is so deep and wide, you're going to love it. And what you had mentioned about having your blood, you're going to do it for five years. All he talked about where he really emphasized the fact that data is exactly what we need. We're in a day and age where data is available to us. Yeah. So we got the whoop bracelets and the, the aura rings and all of these things that can track sleep. They can track heart rate. They can track all of it. Even our phones are so sophisticated, but the data that we can have and analyze can absolutely change the way we exist if we just take a look at it. So I'm gonna get one of those whoop wristbands and you know, I'm trying to get them to sponsor me because it would make sense because I really you want to- You can have mine. Okay. I have one, you can have it. I, I did it for about three months and tested it out. Wasn't happy with the, um, the usage of it uh, or the understanding of how to, um, for me, it wasn't simple. Okay. You know, yeah, I wanted this information, this, this, and this. I couldn't, you know. It was one of those days, Jeffrey, find me this. Find me this. It's like, it was like, okay, I'm done. Yeah, I'm um, the same way. Someone was telling me, yeah, all you got to do is a Google search on. I'm like, man, if you can't tell me right here, right now, I don't want to do it. <laughs> yeah. I'll give yeah. it a try, though, because I do understand and I value that data now more than I ever have in my life. And that would be the message to get across like you had mentioned, these younger kids have all of this available now. We, no one, I mean, I wasn't doing blood work back in the day. I was just freaking showing up and lifting weights, man. Yeah. But now with all of this information available, someone could track their life from age 20 to age 60 and have so much valuable content. That could be a book. It could be anything. It just 
stuff to look back on to repeat. All I have are journals for when Kathy Sasson trained me for the EAS ad, you know? <laughs> so I have that journal uh, from nine years old when I started this and my first pictures and the measurements of my arm and every three months after that and to 11, 13, my first Olympic lifting meet, 14, my first bodybuilding and powerlifting. And I have this thick notebook and it's all the way through my teens and into my 20s of training, uh, uh, of my measurements, my body weight, everything. And I'm sitting there thinking about Titan and what this kid is going to have. And, and because if you think I got hate or get hate, which you, I don't get hate. I never think of that as hate. I just is below average people crying about their uh, what their genetic uh, or their what their effort is. But what I love is that he's going to get tenfold. And I want to prepare him for that with a notebook of just keeping that in his growth spurt, the way he's eating from. So you want to go live? Okay. All right. Well, he doesn't want to do it. But but when I get to get to that age where he gets to check his blood and see how he's growing and how his expand is, and if he does reach his potential of 6'9", which I hope he doesn't reach that, I'm, I'll be the first father going, I hope he doesn't reach what the doctors project him at. It's like 6'6", six, six, we got him, right? You, me, uh, Heath. We, we got him at 6'6", six, six. he'll do whatever he wants. 6'9 is a little extreme. Yeah, that's, that's big. That's, a, that's a, You're going to say goodbye to him at 12, I'm probably by 13, 14. <laughs> He's a, oh, boy. Um, so it's going to be a fun ride. Listen to what Clark's saying, though, about two guys that have done this and competed at the highest level. That's that's um, was chosen to be on more fitness covers because of what the leaders – and, and of the industry believed what the ultimate male should look like. Um, that you kids, again, I say it, um, and anybody younger than 60 is a kid to me. Uh, you guys take the opportunity to listen to what Clark says, not about the strength, not about the abs. Yes, 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 on, on, when you're training, but about the blood work, about taking care of yourself, about eating the way you're eating and about how he tests himself emotionally on a Sunday. I know it doesn't seem like much. Oh, I can go to a, a, a brunch on Sunday and not eat. No, you can't. That's a small few that can go there, sit down with that same the same dog fight in them they had an hour ago. Now you're in the fight, and you got to sit there and watch everybody eat and smell that and go, I'm good. It's a different human. Yeah, you, you got to learn to dig into that stuff. And that's the beauty of being able to listen to us, right? Is you get this insight into what it looks like on the other side. The feeling and the pride in the, like, I did this, right? It, it's something that a lot of people will never understand because they've never challenged themselves to do something like that. And it's it's such a sad place to be. And I don't want anyone who follows or listens to this to be victim of that, be victim of not having enough discipline, intestinal fortitude, whatever you want to call it, to not have a meal. Like it's not that hard. You're not dying. I would I would recommend that everyone try it. Go somewhere and sit there and just don't eat. And when everyone asks you why, you don't have to have an answer for them. Just say, you know, I'm not, I'm not hungry. And you might be starving. Don't ever let anyone know, man. You sit there like a gangster and just like, I'm good. And inside, your stomach might be growling, but don't show them. And I promise you, I promise you, when that meal is over and everyone is going, man, I ate too much. I feel like shit, uh, whatever. Or if, even if they're saying, oh, that was the greatest meal ever, you're going to walk out the other side going, I did it. I did it because you didn't die. Nothing bad happened. None of your friends left you. Most likely they were wondering, huh, I wonder what he's doing. I wonder why he didn't eat. What's going on? Why does he look so good? Why, why does he have so much energy? I don't get it. I promise how, you. How did he say no? How did he say no? Those little freaking, those minute little daily things add up. And I'm not saying they add up in a week, 
but they add up in a year. They add tremendously in 10 years. And you're a different person. And, and again, uh, you've been there uh, uh, on my worst freaking days. Um, and so you've seen there's little things that I didn't give up, even when it seemed like things were hopeless. And it's like, man, I wish that everybody had uh, those things established in you to when it is bad. Because I'm not saying, Clark, I know you may think Clark going to eat is easy as pie. I don't think it is. I think it's hard to go there and sit and, and not eat the meal. But I'll do it because we liked we like knowing that we can control the ship. At the end of the day, we control the ship. The ship doesn't control us. And so we're still in charge of it. So if Clark wants to drop five pounds, he drops five pounds. He wants to put five pounds on, he puts five pounds on. He wants to go be active, he's active. And I just wish more people would live that. I got to talk about one thing is uh, you get a lot of negativity at times. I get a little bit. Um, the, the funny thing was the emotional stuff that you get, the, the calls going, and I know this for a fact, you get, Clark, you changed my life. When I came to you, I was broken and so on and so forth. And, and hey, that's me too, but you've changed my life and you've turned me into something different later in life. Can you talk about what that makes you feel like? It's surreal. I, there was an actually, there was a guy here today who I have the message right here on my phone, man. I could play it for you. He showed up today because I said, hey, he, he was in town and he was going to show up and, and do a workout. And I said, let's do this thing. And let me see if I can find it here. Let me see. The reason why I want to say that is because I, I, I got a story as well, like yours today. And I've, I know you can get tons of these because you work with such good guys. Go for it. What's up, Clark? I just want to wish you uh, your family happy Easter. And uh, just wanted to share, like, today it kind of means, like, uh, rejuvenation and coming back from the dead. But having you in my life, dude, has turned my shit around. I won't need a tomb for a long time. So I just want to know how blessed and grateful I am that uh, you've been a part of my life and how wonderful my life is. And... Uh, that's about as real as it gets, man. So I love you. Take care. Have a wonderful fucking day, buddy. See you Tuesday. Uh, how, how, how does it get better than that? So imagine this. For everybody that's listening, the, the, the hate is so relevant. It's so irrelevant to the, the changing of a person's life just because you're staying true to the knowledge that you have, the way you live, and the way you want to help people. It, it doesn't beat that kind of message. That changes you tremendously. And you're just being you. That's it. We're both living our purpose. And when you're living your purpose, there's definitely going to be people who recognize that. And for whatever it is, some might call it jealousy. You know, either way, it's just someone unsatisfied with how they have shown up in their life. And maybe they're not living their purpose. So when they see someone who is, and we're so passionate and direct and, and energetic about it, that is not appealing to someone who's not operating on the same vibrational plane. So it's just gonna, it's gonna miss. So they're just gonna react and that's fine. But that's what we do is we remind ourselves, man, we listen to that and that guy was here, we did a workout. And, and another thing that happened, we walked up this big hill next to my house and on the way down, I knew one of us was gonna slip because it was gravel. And he ended up being the one that slipped and he didn't fall on his butt. And he said to me, that would not have happened a couple of years ago. I would have fallen and hurt myself, but I was able to recover without falling down. And that's because I lost a hundred pounds. Thank you, Clark. And I'm like, you did the work, brother. But just hearing that made me feel so good and seeing that he didn't fall. And I said, brother, you're an athlete. That was an athletic move. And, and you need to understand and embrace that. And so that goes back to the, the, you know, why people go in the gym to get ripped. That had nothing to do with being ripped. That had everything to do with him understanding how his body works, not having 100 extra pounds on it, and, and being, you know, 
nimble enough to catch himself before he fell down like he would have a hundred pounds ago. The the mindset that you have today have has been carved out of stone over the last 40 years of training and, and, and living in that battle. And I think it's amazing for you and me to, to get together and have those moments and then talk about the young 20 year olds, us, and how much we've grown, especially coming from champions at 20 and going, wait a minute, hold on for a second. Those kids didn't know shit. As much as they knew and they can get on stage and lift the world and, and, and break things and, and kick ass, they knew so little about the soul. And it's amazing. Health and fitness is so much more about the soul and the battle than it really is about here's your proper nutrition. Here's your proper training. If you can, if you can collect and, and conquer the control of that, you, yourself, you're tenfold more going to exceed and, and, and win life. So for you kids out there, man, listen to this kid and, and what he's saying. And I love that we get to help people because they're doing the work. We're just helping. Yeah. We're, you know? we're, we're giving them the guidelines or the guardrails for their life. It's like, Hey, operate within these guidelines and you're going to be fine. And, and it's funny. I had a guy quit my coaching program the other day because I coached him. And, you know, talking about these guidelines and guardrails. And this is a really good point that people need to hear. If you have a coach in your life and they tell you something that you don't, it doesn't resonate with you. It's because we have a unique perspective that we're looking at you from. And that's why you came to us. And this guy, grown man, 50 something years old, he was getting great results. And I have these five principles. And I asked my guys to check in with me on a scale of one to 10, one being least, 10 being the best. And I say, I'd never judge myself. I'd never give myself a 10. I'll never give myself a 10 on anything because that means what? There's no room for improvement. So I'm looking at this thread on WhatsApp and these guys are like 10s, 10s. And one guy said, hey, I'm at an 11. So I had to intervene. I said, look, man, I, I got to keep this in check because now guys are going to report 20 and I just got a free for all. I have no way to help people anymore. So I shoot a video. I said, hey, and nobody's ever at an 11, man. Come on, man. There is no way. It's just one to 10. Oh, man, he quit because he couldn't handle that. Like, that's weak, especially if you're getting results. So these guidelines are there for a reason. These these guard, That's why there's guardrails on the freeway, right, to keep you safe and keep you in a lane, to keep you moving in a direction to get you to where you want to go. It's, it's a simple process, man. You see – as somebody like you are, you're this elite coach, you see their potential when they don't see their own potential. That's like any good. You know, I, I learned that from the Hoosiers coach. But it was like, I know what you're capable of, even if you don't know. Your parents don't know. Your friends don't know. Your soul doesn't know. I know what you can do. And That's part of the that. gift right there. That's part of the gift of a good coach. You could assess like it will take that's that's a deeper conversation that you were just having, but we'll bring it up just to the body. You could look at someone in a jacket. You can just look at their jawline and know how much you could change their body. I know that about you. They could have a full parka on and without seeing them with their shirt off, you're like, I know what I can do with you exactly by the way they walk in, by how they look, by just so many different intangibles that like that's where the good stuff comes in and and that's why i tell my guys man like i never talk to my guys about the treadmill or cod i i talk to them about the deeper stuff that unlocks the easy stuff anyone can tell you get on a treadmill and eat white fish and asparagus that's simple yeah. you know but it's it's the deeper things that unlock and demystify fitness is what I tell my guys, man. That, that kind of relationship. I love you, kid. I'll, I'll see you. Um, I'm going to go down and, and get on Clark's podcast here if you, in the future in person. Um, I'm going to be uh, – well, I'll finish off with Clark here and then give you the guys' schedule. But, Clark, thanks for hanging out today, brother. Right on, my brother. Love you, man. You got to see Titan soon. I'm ready. All right, brother. Talk soon. Peace. Tremendous.
Tremendous. Always, always, uh, I was going to say knowledgeable, but more soulful, I guess, for me. Um, great information again for you guys out there. Um, I got a lot of appearances coming up here. We're traveling off the East Coast again, a, a short couple days span here. East Coast, up north, uh, San Jose, the following weekend, uh, the 22nd, I think that is, I will be doing a uh, legend seminar at the Evo uh, convention, uh, fitness convention, expo. And then um, Arizona, anybody in Arizona, I will be in Gilbert, Arizona on the 29th. I sound like one of those, uh, you know, the comedians when they start talking about, I'll be in uh, Laugh City over in Utah. Um, but I will be at uh, Fitness 1440 in Gilbert, Arizona on the 29th. And uh, let's leave it at that for right now on the information. And I uh, yes, uh, mark your calendars for the 17th Fox Television 911. I will be making a guest appearance on the show. So, again, that's with Angela Bassett. Um, and that will be out next Monday, I think it is. All right. Have a great night tonight. You guys freaking rock. And, and uh, I'm sorry I didn't get time to answer any questions today, but I will be back here tomorrow to see if I can't help you guys out on anything. Titans, all my Titan crew members, if you guys want to get into the Titan crew, it is facebook.com backslash groups backslash Michael Hearn. It is a private group of like-minded people that want to try to get better each day. And um, that is a private group. So you just answer the questions to get in there. Again, it is uh, free to all subscribers of the Titan Nutrition and Training. Have a great day today. And again, the merch, Transgender, uh, is over at uh, the Michael Hearn Lifestyle. All right, let's keep rocking and rolling. Enjoy the day, and I'll see you guys this week.